London's lost streams and waterways um, in Walthamstow here managed to find this. I know this area quite well now, but it was actually, I was doing some railway stuff up there and it's only now that I realised, just looking at the lie of the land, um, to think that William Booth Bryan himself belatedly should be called Sir William Booth Bryan would have come down here under candlelight or oil gas lamp down there, um, part of the original uh, amazing East London Waterworks um, aqueduct. It's quite amazing, really. Um, I mean, this sort of like industrial revolution hub of Walthamstow, which a lot of people don't know about. It's the Walthamstow curve there going back to um, Victorian times. You've got the other one that they're battling to bring in next door. You've got various streams and sources here, hence why they've raised that. But there's a lot of land level changes here because you used to have a reservoir over there. See that? Which used to be um, a gravity fed reservoir fed off the River Lee. Now it's the filter beds. So it used to be filter beds down there, sorry, filter, a uh, settling tank for the water there, for Thames water. And they're still bringing in um, water from the Thames on a 19 mile tunnel from Hampton. Um, the Thames is highly polluted. The, the, the River Lee and the Copper Mill stream are um, as pure as hell. I wouldn't hesitate to drink water out of that higher up by Chingford. Um, on top of that, you've got massive works there. They're extending this. You see, um, it won't be it won't be long until you don't see this anymore. <laughs> by the way, um, you've got massive works there extending the Thames Water. Massive works there. You've got massive works other, over there um, where they're working on the railway the expansion for Stratford Angel Road Star, and this was the original bankment for the. Um, it was all taken care of, absolutely impeccable really when you look at it. Um, stop flooding. You've got flood curbs down there as well to prevent flooding. Because it was mechanical, they didn't have electricity, they didn't have gas, they didn't have computer aided technology, they didn't have any scapegoats that would last 30 years when people are getting a 35 mortgage when it needs to be rebuilt. These guys had to think properly to do amazing engineering. So what happened was everything had to be gravity fed. Okay, you had pumps, you had steam pumps, you had turbines fed by water, but you had to be really, really smart. The thought of a Cummins engine or a Perkins Jenny or a pump, uh, uh, electricity was the future. These boys who built this couldn't even listen to music while they were working, while they dig this out. Now, if you imagine, not only did you not have a radio, you didn't even have a gramophone, right? But you did not even have any tools that we have today. Forget your power tools, right? Forget your, um, look at that. Forget your, um, look at that. It looks like dry stone walling. Forget the, um, what's it called? The, uh, like anything you think of today, power drills, all that, Makita, Hitachi, um, even all the Chinese crap. Forget that. Yeah. You just have horses and you just have, dare I say, Irish navvies to build this. And it was all done. And they take, took care of everything in here. They took care of everything. That's why the lay of the land, the topography is different. Absolutely unbelievable. And the little bits are still lying around, unbelievable. And now we're slowly rediscovering it like a hundred years after taking it out of commission. So William Booth Bryan, chief water engineer of East London Waterworks should be knighted. Join us. This is the East London Waterworks Viaduct. That was the lowest reservoir there. So you still see the banking um, for a gravity fed from the River Lee. And it had a gravity fed runoff all the way down there. If all fails, if anything fails on this, if you have a breach or a failure, it was all taken care of. And down there, you've got a massive holding area, which may be built on soon. It's about the size of a forest. It's about the size of this times 100, 
yeah? In case something breached, they didn't want the Thames breach, otherwise uh, the boats would be upset or, you know, it would create a bulge, whatever you call it, bilge. And then they didn't want the Lower River Lee upset because um, all the, the navigation, it would upset the weirs and the, um, uh, what's it called, the um, feed and bleed uh, unique, very intricate uh, control of the of, uh, Riverly Navigation Canal, which is to my right, the other side of the Riverly. So they they took everything into account here. And look at this, trees, 120 years later. I mean, in my opinion, looking at the stuff that William Beast Bryan did, he's on par with Brunel. He's definitely on par with Brunel. And if you don't know about him, look him up, because there'll be questions asked here in about 20 years when this is all underwater. Join us this. William Booth Bryan.